Hello everyone, welcome back to Buenos Aires, Argentina. In our last video, we took a train from Retiro train station along the Tigre line up to beautiful San Isidro in Zona Norte, north of Buenos Aires city. And we saw some very, very cool things. It's a beautiful little town with uh, beautiful buildings and beautiful parks. And we managed to track down the former home of Juan Martin Pueyrredon. And we were just about to go inside and visit when we ended our last video. So if you want to see what's inside, come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. All right, so there it is right there, Museo Puerredon and the gate is open, which is a good sign. Gate open makes me think museum open. So let's go, uh, let's go see. Oh, here we go. A sign, information. Nuevos horarios. Ha. Miércoles, jueves y viernes. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So. Like I said on the website, they basically, one part of the website said it was only open Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, I think. And then another one said it was open Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I went with my gut, and I was right. It's open. We're here on Wednesday. So before we head in, let's take a little quick look around the estate here. The former estate of uh, Pueredon. Beautiful. I imagine we're gonna get a chance to walk around more out here. So let's go inside, see if it costs anything, and uh, see what we're working with here. Okay, we're inside. It is, uh, it's free to get in, but there's a donation box, you know, so you can donate a few, few thousand pesos. And uh, it's beautiful. Some birds going nuts in that tree. Really beautiful. I want to look around. It's just a self-guided tour, of course. There's a well here in the middle. And this is like how the, uh, the hacienda, right, would have been set up. Circle around with a courtyard in the middle with a well. This is a pretty standard style that we've seen in different places. Like, it reminds me, um, even though this is newer, um, it reminds me... Well, actually, it's not that much newer, now that I think about it. But it reminds me of um, the... Uh, the place that we saw in Cordoba. Um, why am I blanking on that guy's name? Rafael de Sobramante. That was the guy. And a uh, very controversial figure actually here in Buenos Aires. Um, Rafael de Sobramante. Because during the uh, invasion of the British, actually, like we uh, saw that plaque down there of the uh, order to rally the troops and the horses and the guns and go fight the British. Um, Rafael de Sobramante actually fled Buenos Aires and apparently he took all the silver and the gold with him and uh, fled to Cordoba to his house that he had out in Cordoba. So he's actually uh, out in Cordoba I think he was like trying to regroup, reform an army to like come back and retake Buenos Aires. So in Cordoba he's like pretty famous, pretty well known, there's stuff named after him and uh, He's well, well, like, liked in history in Cordoba. But here in Buenos Aires, he is, like, persona non grata. Anyway, interesting video about him. I'll put the link in the description, of course. But we're not here to talk about Rafael de Sobramante. We're here to talk about Juan Martin de Puerreron. Let's go in and see. I think there's a little museum exhibition that we can go check out about the man on. Although it is really nice, <laughs> really nice out here. Like I said, it's a nice day. The sun is shining. It's uh, it's cool, but it's not like too cold. It's good sweatshirt weather. 
Oh, I think we have to go this way. We gotta go back in. It's a nice day. It's a nice day to come out and see an old, an old dude's estate. Here's his uh, signature right here, which I imagine was added later. I don't think the dude signed his estate. Although maybe, you know, you never know, man. All these uh, these old aristocrats from the uh, from back in the day. They did some crazy stuff, you know? They'd be right in the middle of a civil war, war for independence, governing an entire, you know, a country that takes up like one third of the land mass of South America. And they'd get in some like spat, with some other aristocrat and be like, sir, I challenge you to a duel. Get shot, die. Leave the whole country in just like power vacuum chaos for decades because of it. Weird times. Look at this frightening dog. I think that dog is, is frightened. It looks terrified. This is very cool. This is the, I guess, dining room, right? China and silver. A picture of, who is this? Brilliano Puerredon. Here is the painter, and it is the son of Juan Martin Puerrelon. And this is a painting of Marquita Nin Frias de Gallup. So all of these paintings, I imagine, are by, yeah. Prilidiano, no, Prilidiano Puerredon. Prilidiano Puerredon. This is a painting of Mercedes Araña de Perez. Mercedes Araña de Perez. Jose Roque Perez. I don't know who these people are, and I'm not going to look them up. Uh, ooh, look at this. Check it out. It's a harpsichord. I think. Harpsichord? Piano forte. Is piano forte a harpsichord? Mm. It's either a piano or a harpsichord. It's really cool looking, whatever it is. And there's a shotgun on the wall with some very ancient dead birds. Apparently they like to hunt. And another another painting by Prilidiano. A painting of a young woman. It actually doesn't say the name. It actually is called Painting of a Young Woman. Enrique Lezica. I guess this is what you did if you were like the son of an aristocrat, an aristocrat yourself. You became a painter. Like, probably to spite, <laughs> to spite your father. I'm not dad, I'm not going into politics. I'm going to be a painter. And then you just basically painted portraits of uh, all the other like rich aristocrats many chairs famous butts sat in those chairs I bet you more portraits man this guy he painted a lot of portraits they're very good too I think I mean I don't know I'm no I'm no art critic but I think they're good this is like the first one of these portraits where someone's smiling. Antonia Perea Agribel de Iraola. Looks like uh, we'll go upstairs too. I think we'll go upstairs. We will shortly. 
I'm going to keep looking around down here first. Oh, look. We can, uh, can sign our name here. Show that we were here. 17, 7, 24. This guy looks like a cheerful fella. Who is this? Uh, Guillermo Wheelwright. Hmm. Guillermo Wheelwright. Um, Newbury Port, Newbury Port, Estado de Massachusetts. Huh. There you go, United States. Empresario de los vapores del Pacífico entre Valparaíso y Panamá. En Argentina desarrolló el ferrocarril Gran Centro Argentino y Puerto y Tren de Ensenada. Okay, so he was a railroad guy. Which, uh, if I know my history, probably means he actually wasn't a very cheerful dude. Because, man, railroad barons were, like, very powerful and oftentimes cutthroat gentlemen. Who do we have here? This is... Uh, oh, this is not actually a Pueriadon. This is a Gabriel Jose Maria Ferrier. It is Hortensia Aguirre de Lelior and Marta Lelior de Udan. Udando. Udando. Okay. Now that I'm done butchering people's names in Spanish, let's try and get a good view with no glare. Lovely portrait. The thing about portraits, man, you had to, uh, you had to sit still for a long time. Careful not to bonk our head here. Stairwells and doorways and all kinds of things from back in the day. Not designed for a person of my height. El arte de Prilliano Pueredon. There he is. Ooh, look at this. Nice little sitting room. Little place where you could paint. I guess they would sit them here, right? They'd sit there. And he'd sit over here. And he'd paint them. All the different aristocrats from back in the uh, 1800s. And a little sunroom out here. Sit and enjoy the sun. Go out onto the little roof terrace. We're not going to do that. I don't think we're allowed to. Could overlook the uh, little courtyard in the middle and sit back and just enjoy. Enjoy being rich. Not bad. Yeah, you can see the uh, the estuary out there. And actually, it's pretty clear. You probably can't see this in the video, but I can see all the way across the estuary to Uruguay. Pretty cool. That's the privilege. That's the privilege of actually being here and not watching this in a video. It's, you can see things with your own eyes that the camera can't always pick up. What do we have over here? Oh, the kitchen. I've said this before in videos. I like seeing the kitchen in any historical house. The kitchen is like the most intimate, I think, room, right? Everybody has to eat. And it's really cool to see how things were prepared. They would just, of course, make a little fire underneath 
that giant copper pot. Cook everything in there. So cool. A lovely dress worn by Maria Calixta Teyesha. Teyeshea de Puereadon. I imagine that's his daughter. A ship, the HMS Triton. I wonder why this is important. It's 1806, so that's like when the British invaded. Perhaps this was one of the ships that they invaded on? Maybe? Would make sense. They showed up. They blockaded the uh, port of Buenos Aires, sailed up the uh, up the estuary, up into the River Paraná. Here's a timeline. Juan Martín de Puerto 1776, born 18th December, died in 1850. 1850, same year actually as uh, as uh, Jose de San Martín. 1850. Here are some of his guns, I think. I guess. If you're going to fight off the British, you know, you've got to have guns. Some religious artifacts. Old map, old map of Carte do Paraguay do Chile. Old map, how old is this map? Well, it's pretty old because there's no Rio de la Plata. So uh, it's pretty old. Well, I think that's it. I think we've seen seen the whole hacienda here. Unless there's another room over here. Uh, nope, it's all closed off. There was, I think, maybe something through here, like in the office. I think they said there was like a little exhibition, maybe. Oh yeah, a whole like a whole long history timeline of this La Quinta. There's a nice picture of it from the outside. Really beautiful estate, actually. So, 1573, Asuncion. The ex. Okay, so I mentioned this in some previous videos, but Buenos Aires was founded twice. Um, they basically sailed in. Um, Asuncion was actually already in, in Paraguay, right up here, was already a Spanish colony city. And um, the first time they found it in Buenos Aires in like 15, oh God, 1530s or something. I'll put the exact uh, year, of course, in the subtitle, but they were attacked by natives and beset by disease and it was bad, it was really bad. So they basically sailed back up to Asuncion and they hung out there for like, I don't know, like 40 years, basically, before they made a uh, return trip. The expedition of Juan de Garay came back down and finally f founded Buenos Aires. And that time it stuck in 1580. The Guarani, the people, who the native people who lived here in uh, Argentina, around here, before uh, the Spanish arrived... The first ranch of the Rio de la Plata, I guess, looked like that. And then was eventually developed a little bit more. Here's 
Here's some of the things we saw in the kitchen. Beautiful pastoral scene, painted, of what, uh, guess what it would look like way back in the day. Floor plan of the of the estate here. Here's the estate completed, and uh, some uh, some people. Oh, this is a uh, pretty Diano, Pueyrredon, and that's Maria. So this is he painted his sister, I guess. Here's another of the estate. Oh, with the garden, yeah, that we saw out there. And there's Brilliano painting. And here, like, first photographs of the estate. From 1880. Okay, I think, I think we've seen it. Look. This was very cool. I'm glad we came and see it. Saw it. Um, I think we're gonna head back out and head back to uh, San Isidro and walk around a little bit more. Quite enjoyed that. Very nice. Very cool to see old, old houses. Old houses of old rich dudes. Honestly, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool to tour, you know. See some pretty cool stuff. Obviously, a very nice place to build your house up on top of uh, this hill here. Up on top of this hill, we saw the beautiful view going down uh, to the railroad and then all the way past, all the way out to the estuary. And I was able to see across the estuary, all the way over to Uruguay. So, here we are on uh, Calle Roque Sáenz Peña. The famous Roque Sáenz Peña. Very interesting dude, Roque Sáenz Peña. Former president of Argentina. Volunteer colonel who fought in uh, the War of the Pacific on the side of the Peruvians and uh, was captured at the Battle of Arica. Later repatriated back to, uh, to Argentina. He's a hero here in Argentina and former president he's a hero in uh, in Peru also they have statues and streets and all kinds of stuff named after him there very very interesting dude more about him in the video we made in Peru about the war in the Pacific we visited a uh, visited a museum there to the war of the Pacific the Battle of Arica there was a whole section it was all just like dedicated to uh, Roque Sáenz Peña Pretty interesting guy. I think the thing to do now would be to walk back into the uh, commercial area here of San Isidro. And I'm going to get something to eat because I am hungry. And there were lots of really nice looking restaurants. I'm sure going to have some really delicious food. So let's go do that. Found this little pedestrian shopping street that like cuts through between two blocks called the Queen's Village. It's pretty cool. Some nice stores. It's a video game store. Nerd store. Love it. It's got a hole upstairs. It's nice. Kiosko. Dog grooming place for all your dog grooming needs. Very nice. There's a restaurant down at the end here. I can smell it. it smells delicious. What is it? Cien Amores Petit Pastelleria. Oh yeah. 
They're making sandwiches and tarts, quiches. Looks delicious. Not where we're going to eat, though. Want to walk around a little bit more. Go around a little more and see what else there is, and then make our decision. Well, the place that I wanted to go is a place called uh, Puma Cafe. It's like right down the street, but uh, no tables. There was actually a line of people to get a table, so I'm hungry right now. So instead, I found this place that looks like it is a uh, like a neighborhood, well-known neighborhood establishment, Pancharia Coquito. It is a uh, pancheria. Pancheria is a hot dog shop, and uh, there's also a line at Pancheria Coquito. Pancheria Coquito, but I imagine because it's like a hot dog joint, the line's gonna move really fast. So let's go get ourselves some panchos. delicious had the one it was so good had another and uh, that place really actually is like a uh, it's still super packed like in there but it is like a neighborhood uh, establishment famous neighborhood establishment since 1955 Pancheria Coquito so if you ever come here to San Isidro check it out Pancheria Coquito very good hot dogs and uh, very simple very simple menu super nice people too working there so check it out so uh, real quick, before we get back on the train and head back into the city, I want to go like across the tracks here um, down to like the other part of San Isidro because like I mentioned, we were in between the, uh, the two like train stations, the, the Tigre line out of Retiro and then the, um, the Tren de la Costa. And that's where like there's a lot of commercial stuff, but I think there's more stuff down here on the other side of the, of the tracks going south. So let's go down there and just see what the neighborhood looks like real quick, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll loop back around and hit uh, hit up the train to get back to uh, back to Buenos Aires City. So it looks like there's like a major street through here, which I imagine has some commercial stuff on it. The street just on the other side of the train station has shops, but there's something I wanted to point out. Uh, this is Kentucky. Now I've never pointed this out in any of the previous videos we've done here, in Buenos Aires, but Kentucky is a chain and uh, it's not what you think it's pizza it's like a pizza chain of course Kentucky Fried Chicken the famous uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant from the United States with locations you know thousands of locations everywhere all over the world uh, that's not what this is this is a chain that is here in Buenos Aires I think it's only in Buenos Aires I'm not sure but it's like a pizza joint pizza and empanadas that kind of stuff which it to me is crazy because uh, if you're from the United States or you're familiar with the United States you know that uh, Kentucky is uh, not really one of the famous like uh, pizza centers of the country so uh, it's interesting that they have a whole chain of pizza restaurants here called Kentucky there is a major street through here like really big actually three lanes like in each direction big old street lots of shops along it though <clears throat> and uh, a lot of bus stops along here so it looks like in addition to being able to take the train uh, to either the Tren de la Costa or the Tigre line you could probably get here by bus I imagine there's a lot of like uh, bus routes that are running here to other parts of the suburbs other parts of San Isidro I think, uh, I think I want to head down this way. I just want to see what the neighborhood looks like on the other side of the uh, the other side of the railroad line. Just see if it's any different. It doesn't look that much different. It looks really nice over there from here. But I want to walk down a few blocks and just take a look and uh, and see for myself. It's nice down here. Even just like a block off of the uh, the main uh, road there. Nice and kind of quiet back here. I see over like maybe like a couple blocks over there's a high rise of apartments and there's some of these like little mid rise apartments in here. So it's nice. It's not as like super super fancy as the area that was like 
right around uh, uh, Puerreron's estate. But of course, you know, that's like the prime real estate. So you'd expect it to be nicer, but this still is very nice. I would 100% if I was like looking for a place to to stay, if I was gonna stay in a certain neighborhood, if I was decided to come back to Buenos Aires and not stay in the city, but you know, stay in like one of the uh, suburbs again, I'd definitely stay down here. It's nice. stuck between a car and a bush yeah it's nice like I said real quiet back here we're just one block off of the main street it's really quiet really peaceful so I guess if you are coming to Buenos Aires and you want like a place to stay that's a little more peaceful, you know what I mean? Because like a lot of neighborhoods in Buenos Aires, they're nice and they're fun to stay in, but like it's like you know what I mean? Like it's loud. There's a lot of street noise. Buses going by, like people like out on the streets talking very loudly. And uh you know, it's just it's a city city noise right and if you like that then by all means stay in the city but if you want something that's like a little more chill more peaceful i mean listen to this right granted it's like two three o'clock in the afternoon you know sort of a lull time in buenos aires in argentina in general argentina is a country where a lot of stuff sort of like closes down in the, uh, the middle of the day. Businesses will close. People will go home to have lunch. The streets get very quiet during the middle of the day. Um, a lot more so than like other places that we've been. And then everything sort of opens up again, you know, around six, seven o'clock at night. The restaurants start to open around eight. Still, it's very peaceful back here. Another one of these two door style houses Lots of like single family homes back here, but with some like mid rise apartments mixed in. This kind of mixed use neighborhood with commercial up there, one block up, um, mid rise apartments mixed in with single family homes. Like that kind of thing is uh, actually in a lot of suburbs in the United States illegal because of zoning laws. And so you end up with suburbs that are either grandfathered in because they were built before the zoning laws went into place in like the 50s and the 60s. And they have maybe some like mixed use, um, uh, like some, some apartment and condos, mid-rise buildings like this, also single family homes. But then like, there's a lot of them honestly that are just single family homes and that's it. The entire suburb is basically just zoned for single-family homes, except for maybe a very, very small part of it. And uh, that's what you get. Which, I mean, is great if that's what you want. If you want your own single-family home with a garage and you want to just have to drive everywhere, then fantastic. That's the place for you. But I think there's a lot of people, me included, who would like the opportunity to, like, walk places. If we, if we don't, you know, like, really have to drive. I mean, I've been traveling around South America for, like, shit, how long has it been now? It's been, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like, nine months. It's been a long time. And uh, everywhere I've stayed, I've been trying to stay in neighborhoods that are, like, very walkable and have good public transportation access, basically because, like, I don't have a car. And uh, I'm not gonna like rent a car. It's, it's way too expensive. It's way too much of a hassle to try and drive around in a city, in a country where you're not familiar. So, and I've been really, really uh, happy with how many neighborhoods there are that are like that and how easy they are to find. 
and not just in the cities, but like outside of the cities too, like this in the suburbs. Over here we got uh, a big park, looks like, across the street here. This is uh, Roque Sáenz Peña, I think. I think if we go up that way, we're back up to uh, the, uh, we go up this way, we're back up to the, um, what's it called? The Guerrero Estate. But I think, uh, I've seen even though we only walked through a couple blocks down here on this side I think I've seen it and I like it so what's the verdict I think the verdict on San Isidro is I like it and when I was thinking about potentially staying here uh, I think that would have been a good decision and I think I would have enjoyed staying in San Isidro and who knows if I ever come back to Buenos Aires again and I want to stay out in the suburbs, maybe I will stay here in San Isidro. And then I will have had three different visits to Buenos Aires. One where we stayed in the south suburbs, one where we stayed in the city itself, and then one where we stayed in the north suburbs. That would be nice. Maybe it's in the future, maybe not, who knows. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed visiting the estate of former Supreme Director of the United Provinces of Rio de la Plata. Juan Martin de Puerto Redon. Uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed those hot dogs at the uh, Pancheria Coquito since 1955, serving the city of San Isidro. And uh, I enjoyed the train ride up here too. Didn't actually film any footage from it because unfortunately the train we were riding was a uh, one of the ones with like ads painted on the windows. And the sun was shining into the windows from our side of the train. So it was basically just all glare the whole way. If I had filmed, you wouldn't see any of it. But uh, I'll tell you, it was a nice train ride. It's a nice, peaceful train ride up here. Uh, and now we're gonna enjoy a nice, peaceful train ride back to the city. And that's gonna be it for the video. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.